Hi everyone, it's Amaris and today I am back to introduce myself to you guys in the book community and share a little bit more about who I am as a reader and the kind of books that I like. So I thought it would be fun to talk about some bookish related things about myself and then for every fact that I share I am going to talk about one of my favorite books. The first fact that I have come to terms with is that I cannot read audiobooks because I get distracted so easily. So even when I'm reading a physical copy or like on my phone as an ebook, I will catch myself reading the same line over and over again if I am if my mind is somewhere else or I'm thinking about something else. And so that's one of the reasons why I consider myself to be a really slow reader. Even with non-fiction audiobooks, which is easier to follow than fiction, I still can't really do it because I my mind just like goes off so quickly if I'm not concentrated. And that's also another reason why I can't listen to music while I'm reading. I guess that's another fact, but it's all under the same umbrella as I am a distracted reader. So the books that I'm going to share are not in any specific order and they don't relate to the facts that I'm sharing. So it's just like in the order that I wrote them in. The first book that made it onto my favorites list of all time is Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This one is 100% deserving of the hype. If you are hesitant to get into sci-fi, I would highly recommend this one. Um, it's told in text messages, emails, medical files, and all sorts of different mediums um, or media files. So I think that's what makes it really fun and addictive to read um, and really easy to fly through. It follows a couple um, right after they break up and their planet is attacked. So they have to evacuate um, by spaceship and on the spaceship, there is a virus that breaks out um, and they're being chased by an enemy spaceship and the AI on board who is controlling the ship might be dangerous. I admittedly haven't read the second and third book in this trilogy yet. This is another fact that I'm throwing out there, so this is probably going to be more than five facts. But for some reason, with books that I really love, and you'll see this, it with another book that I shared too. I don't continue reading on in the series even though I'm really anticipating the book and I don't know if it's because I'm worried that I'm not going to like it or I don't know why I do this to myself but I just never continue series that I actually like. Fact number two is that contemporary is the genre I read the most of but I'm hesitant to call it my favorite genre because I don't actually think I have one. Um, I It doesn't matter to me what genre a book is in, the book just needs to sound good and I'll pick it up. Um, I, am, I just read the most contemporary because it is the easiest for me to get into. I find that um, in all the other genres, it takes me a while to get into the story and for some reason that just keeps me away from like reading it, which I need to be better at. So since I brought up contemporary, I will share The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord as my second favorite book, not in terms of ranking, but just number two on this list that I'm sharing with you guys right now. But I've only read this book once, which I am embarrassed to admit. There are a lot of things that I'm embarrassed to admit in this video. Y'all can roast me, it's fine. I'm used to it. Um, Anyways, I really love this book because of the friendship element. Um, it follows this girl named Paige who lost her boyfriend. And so she's kind of figuring out how to not so much reinvent her life, but just to continue living it. Even though she has this um, pain that she will forever have to live with. Um, but her friends walk alongside her as it's happening. It was cute. Um, there is a really nerdy and sweet love interest, but he does not define Paige and he is not, it's not, it doesn't revolve around that, but 
it's a really sweet element and the sequel to this book is coming out in January so I will reread this book. I did write a review for this book on my blog um, when I first read it, the only time I read it. So I'll leave the link down below if you're interested. If not, it's cool. I probably will talk about this book more in the future. So third fact is that I rarely use bookmarks because um, I don't have a reason. I really just use whatever's close by, whatever's laying around, whatever I can see, whatever will fit into a book, a receipt. Most of the time, it's a used tissue. I'ma be honest, I'm sorry that's disgusting, but. I am disgusted. I have no excuse and I got nothing else to say on that. The third book on my favorites list is Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin. And this book was so intricately woven. Um, the details were really vivid and it's a really atmospheric book. So actually I would highly recommend this um, to be read around this time of year in the fall. Um, but it takes place in an alternate world where the Axis powers have won World War II and to celebrate their win every year, they host a motorcycle race. Um, so the main character, Yael decides to enter this race with the intentions of winning so she can assassinate Hitler and she does this by impersonating um, a previous winner um, and the only way she does this or I mean she can do this because she has the power to skin shift which you will find out why she can do it if you read this book. It is a blend of a ton of different genres. It's fantasy, it's sci-fi, it's historical fiction, and I love that it can't really be fit into one category. Um, Ryan Grodin is one of my favorite authors. The way that she writes is just so compelling, and her stories are all so much fun to read. So if you have read this book already, read Invictus which is another one of her books. I haven't read The Walled City yet, and admittedly, I haven't read the sequel to this one yet either. That's something that I need to do. Lainey Taylor says, wild and gorgeous, vivid and consuming. I loved it. I agree. So the fourth fact is that I take extensive notes when I'm reading. I'm talking quotes, thoughts, my reactions, my feelings, basically everything that I want to remember so that I can refer to it when I eventually sit down and write up like a Goodreads review or a review for my blog. But actually, the joke's on me because I rarely do that anymore. Well, I rarely did that in the past too, but that was my intention. Um, I first started doing it in journals, so physically writing it out, but then I got kind of tired of it because that's a lot of writing. Now um, I write it out, I type it all up in my notes app on my phone and then I will transfer it into a Google Docs um, so that I have everything together and I can refer to it. In my first journal, which I have with me, um, I started it in 2011 and the first entry is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. So that was when I first started like reading seriously again and so it started off being quotes and I do have some like definitions that I wrote down that I never referred back to but pretty much yeah I just wanted to remember what I read because I have a bad memory. I read The Fall in Our Stars, The Hunger Games, what else did I read? Delirium, ooh. The fourth book that is considered one of my favorites is The Winner's Curse by Marie Rukowski and this one is a fantasy novel the first book in a series. Although I did like The Winner's Crime, which is the second book better than this one, I think. But anyways, this series is about a the daughter of a general. Her name is Kestrel, and she is given two options, to join the military or to get married, and she wants to do neither of those things. So in this book, she decides to buy a slave, and they kind of end up developing feelings for each other um, and Kestrel reminds me a little bit of Jude in The Cruel Prince because they are both very strategic and cunning I would say 
um, and they both want to do what's best for their people, generally speaking. And so that's what drew me to this book and drew me to continue finishing. I think it really shows how smart Marie Rukowski is for writing some of the, um, how do I say it? Like the things that happen in this book are so complicated and there's a lot of layers to it. And so I really appreciate that in the story. So I loved this series. I would revisit it. My last fact is going to take some explanation. I have not heard a single soul talk about this. But if you can relate, let me know. I think someone needs to shed some light on this. But I have not found a position to read in that is both comfortable and supportive for my back and neck. I always end up just reading lying down on the couch with my head like propped up on the sofa arm. So I know that's not good for your neck, but I can't help it because that's probably the comfiest position. Another thing I'll just throw in there, whenever I am reading in that position, I always fall asleep. It's not because the book is boring, but I just can kind of sleep wherever. That's just a random fact about me. I fall asleep very easily. Um, catch me knocked out on the floor with no blanket, no pillow. I don't need anything. I just knock out. That was just a random extra fact that you probably didn't need to know. But um, back to the whole neck thing. Has anyone tried reading with like one of those airplane pillows? Like the travel neck pillows? I probably should try that. Basically what I'm saying is if y'all got any neck support tips, drop them down in the comments. Send me an email. Refer me to any links you got. I will, I will click on your referral link. Actually, no, don't come for me in my emails. In my emails, I'm just gonna get a bunch of like, I can just imagine it now, like emails being sent to me about like reading pillows. Actually, that wouldn't be so bad. Review coming soon, just kidding. The last book that I wanted to talk about is a book that I already shared and mentioned in my previous video, which I will link to if you want to know more about. The book that I'm talking about is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. I'm just going to be like a broken record mentioning this book in every single video, but I felt like I had to share this as one of my favorites um, just because, and I'll keep this brief, I think Celeste Ng does such an incredible job at um, describing her characters through their thoughts and actions. Um, I think it's a really great example of show don't tell and you just get so much about these characters even though they don't say that much. Just the way that Celeste Ng describes and shares the hidden struggles of Chinese Americans in some of these characters was a combination of both pain because it was just so relatable and it hit so close to home um, but also a breath of relief because it was done so well and I want people to understand what that's like. I just saw this thing on Twitter today that was like, what are five books um, that people can put in a circle to summon you? And this is 100% one of those books. So those are five bookish facts and five books that are my favorite of my favorite, the best of the best, the creme de la creme. I will read these books over and over again. Actually, that's a lie. I only read all these books once. What am I doing with my life? Okay, share one book or more if you want um, that I could put in a circle to summon you. I guess that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Bye.